welcome to Comfort Time with Auntie Nike. Our story for today is unmerited favor. I'm sure we've all experienced that in one way or another. Maybe we recognize it, maybe we don't. But every so often we receive gifts from our Lord that we did not even see coming. Please continue to like and subscribe. Those who have already subscribed, thank you. So the story I'm sharing is something that up to today still makes me dance, still makes me sing. So I was paying rent in a house that was quite expensive. So now um, I was praying and asking God to help me find a house that was reasonable. Preferably a council house because um, council houses were the cheapest that one could get but which were decent. And I prayed for that house. I prayed every day. I asked God, please, please, I need a place that is reasonable, especially at a time when I've got four children in school and at one point all the four were in the university and we all know that what that is. So it was really rough for me. Their father had passed on, so I was a single parent, really struggling. And then a house comes up, a nice council house, and I'm told, oh, there's a house that has come up, so you can move into that house. I was very grateful. I thanked God for it and moved into that house. As life continues, another problem comes up. I receive a letter telling me, Madam, sorry, you have to move to a smaller house. Now, this is a house in a high density area, a flat actually, which had fewer rooms because the house that I'd been living in had been allocated to another senior person and I had to move. This was very hard for me. I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I knew it was unfair, but what could I do? But I decided I'm not giving up without a fight. If they're going to move me from here, let them move me to a place which is similar and not throw me to an area where I, I was not going to cope. So now I am back on looking for help from the local government because local government was a senior to the council. So I went to the local government offices in the hope of seeing the minister. I went, tried to get an appointment and the secretary would not allow me would not give me an appointment. She always told me this guy is always busy, he's very busy, and so I also did not want to give up. So every morning I went and waited until one uh, lady, the, the cleaner, came to me one day and asked me, Madam, I see you here every day, but uh, what is going on? So as I explained to her, I need to see the minister. This is the issue that I'm dealing with. And the minister is the only one who can help me. So I need to talk to him so that I can get him to intervene. She said, you know what? I know that you're having challenges to have the secretary allow you to see him. So what you do is go home tomorrow morning come very early, the minister is here usually by 7 and the secretary comes around uh, 7.45 so if you can come here by 7 you'll be able to see him. So I thanked her and I went home. Next day by 06.30 hours at the office. So as I was waiting at the reception, the minister came. He said, good morning, uh, are you waiting for someone? I was like, I was actually hoping that I could have a wait with you. He was like, okay, come with me then. Then I followed him to his office. 
And uh, when we go to his office, he says, yes, what can I do for you? So I had all my papers with me. I explained the story. I explained that I was uh, given a few months ago a house where I've been living, but I've just received a letter telling me that I need to move to vacate the house and move to a small place in the high density area because the house where I was living has been allocated to a senior officer. So I have four children. The place where they are moving me will not work. So he looked at the letter, he read everything, and then he said, okay, um, it's a bit early now. Let's wait for the town clerk to come in. Then I'll call and uh, talk to him. So uh, by that time, the secretary had come in. And you should have seen how shocked she was that she had blocked me so many times to see the minister. And then she walks in and she finds me sitting in his office. And she will ask that she should make some coffee for us. So she made coffee for us and uh, he also told her we're actually waiting for the town clerk to come in. I know he also comes in a bit early. So please check as soon as he comes in, let me know so that I can talk to him. So I offered that I can go and wait at the reception so he could start his week. He was like, no, he comes early, so I'm sure he'll be in any time. So I sat there sipping my coffee and then the lady called and the town clerk had actually come in. So he got my letter, he explained to the town clerk what my situation was. He said, we are dealing with a widow with four children, let's help her, please see what you can do. And the town clerk promised that he would look into it and that uh, if they have to move me, they'll move me to a house which is similar to the house where I was right at the time. So I thanked the minister and I went to the council because he said she can come or we'll deal with it right away. So I went to the council, presented everything, told the secretary that the minister had already talked to the town clerk. I needed to see him. She says, yes, we are aware of your situation. Just wait, they're actually allocating you another place another house where you can move to because you still have to leave that house where you are. I was like, okay. So the letter was done, but then the town clerk left. So I was told to go the following day. So I said, no, I have all the time. I will wait until he comes. I cannot go and go come back just because of the signature. So I'll wait until when he comes. And then the town clerk came back after about two hours. And after two hours, he signed the letter for the house where I was supposed to go. And I was very thankful. And now I went and saw the place that they had said I should move into. It was a beautiful place. It was a corner plot with a lot of space. It had um, a beautiful guest house because the people, the German couple that lived there before had enlarged the um, guest house, which was supposed to be a servant's quarters for their caretaker who had a lot of children. It was near the clinic. It was near the um, hotels, near the shopping mall near the bus stop, near the church. It was like just the perfect place. So I was very happy. I moved into that place and I was thanking God and thanking God every day, even if they told me it was temporal. But for that time, I was grateful. So we waited and waited. And of course, they couldn't find a house similar to the one they had given me where they could move me. So the story of it being temporal was washed away. So now I was comfortably living in that house, knowing it was my place, the renters were easy to manage, and I was very happy and I was very grateful. I thank God every day. And then what happens? We get a presidential declaration that all sitting tenants are free to 
purchase the houses they are living in. And I was like, what? Because my letter didn't say I'm temporary, it just says you are located this house. I was like, okay, so immediately I got my letter, went to the council to find out if I qualified. They looked at my letter, they were like, yep, you qualify. So I said, how much is it? They showed me how much it was and what is the grace period. Of course, I didn't have the money then, but I know I saved a big God. And now I saw God was not messing with me. He wanted me to be a landlord. So I had that faith and I got all the information and I went now looking for money. I started working so hard, saving everything that I could come up with until I had enough money to go and pay for the house. Like I'm sure you've seen the other video where I'm saying what is meant for you will come to you. I'll show the link at the end of the video. You will see that what is yours is yours. I didn't even know it was mine. I was just looking for a place to rent which was reasonable. And God had other plans for me. He wanted me to be a landlord. And I became a landlord. So trust that God has got your back, that God knows what's happening, and that God will take care of everything even when you don't even ask, you don't even know it's available for you to ask. Trust God. Thank you so much. I hope this encourages you to know that what is yours will always find you, will always link up with you. Thank you for listening. See you in the next video.